Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School. It's Ashland Legion Baseball, airing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Broadcasting Network, consisting of HCAM and Hopkinton, WACA TV in Ashland, and HCAT and Hollison as we are set to begin here on this hot, humid, 90-degree day. It is Ashland Post 77 against Medford Post 45 as the first hitter, left fielder Harry Welsh, takes a strike. It is Owen Ward, the pitcher, for Post 77 with the rest of the Ashland defense. Let's send it over to my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. You know, the count one and one, Lewis Rossi's playing third base, Jackson Hornan short. Is a fly ball in the left center field. That's going to hit a gap and up against the wall. Runner's going to hit second, going to try for three. Pulls up. That's a leadoff double. Harry Welsh with the leadoff double. Alex Dorsey, the center fielder, now stepping in. Not a great way to start the game, but Cole Glassburn's playing second base. Zach Pesson at first. Left field. Dominic Cavanaugh, center field, Brad Seymour, right field, Ben Thomas, Sean Jewett behind the plate, catching incoming senior Owen Ward from Holliston. As Ward checks in, runner is back. Ward working from the stretch. Medford defeated Ashland this past Sunday in a home game for Medford. It was an eight to three final. Certainly didn't go the way Post 77 would have liked. They still remain in second place with 11 and four record. Medford is in fourth at 10 and six. Of course, the top four make a postseason spot. This is the final week of the regular season. Swing and a miss, 0 and two. We talked about this uh, before the broadcast that Medford is fielding a lot of prep school players in addition to Medford High players. Yes. Buckingham Brown and Nichols, Manayong. And Alex Dorsin strikes out, out number one. Alex Dorsin's at a Medford High. Now we got Sean Maloney coming to the plate. He's at a Malden Catholic. Not a very good swing, that last pitch. I think he was trying to hold, but it was just too late. Maloney steps in. Owen Ward's had a good season on the mound as their strike one. Starts him off with a breaking pitch. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Ashland to Legion Baseball. Connor Donovan, our cameraman. Certainly the most humid day we've had so far for Ashland Legion Baseball. Temperatures in the 90, but the humidity has got it feeling like the upper 90s. Possibly 100 feels like. <laughs> I could certainly see that. It is a hot one today. We'll get you the numbers on Owen Ward in just a moment as this one's up the right side. A nice diving stop by the first baseman. Steps on the bag for one. Two outs, runner on third now. As Welsh advances, Zach Peston with the three unassisted. And that'll bring up David Price, the first baseman. I don't think there's any relation to the Red Sox pitcher. I was just going to say, <laughs> but Zach Peston is ruling first base this year. Played excellent defense so far. He certainly is. So when Ward working from the stretch, looks at third and deals. And this is up the left side, glove by Horning. Throw to first, not a problem. Six to three on out number three to the bottom of the first we go. You're tuned in to Ashland Legion of Baseball on WACA TV and H Camp. Bottom of the first inning as Post 77 will come up to the plate for the first time. Let's take a look at the Ashland Legion lineup. Ben Thomas plays right field and leads off. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, batting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, hitting third. Dom Cavanaugh, the center fielder, hitting cleanup. Or excuse me, he's the left fielder. Luke Gustafson is the DH, batting fifth. Zach Pesson, the first baseman, batting sixth. Sean Jewett, the catcher, hitting seventh. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, hitting eighth. And Cole Glassburn, the second baseman, hitting ninth. And we'll get you the Medford post-45 defense in just a moment as Ben Thomas steps into the left-handed batter's box. And we are set to go as Tim Albert delivers the first pitch, and it's ball one. Larry, how about that Medford defense? At third base, Teddy Falkenberg, shortstop, David Welsh, second base, Sean Maloney, 
15, David Price at first base. No relation, of course. Pitch. The call strike. Left to right, Harry Welsh, Alex Dorsine, Scott Andrew, and right, Brendan Kelly behind the plate catching Tim Albert out of Boston College High School. Wind up in the pitch, upstairs. Well, no infield outfield today for Medford as they're a little late getting here. Of course, want to make sure we get this game in, and there's some storms off in the distance. They're not expected to hit here, but with this humidity, you just never know. As this is driven into right center, and it is caught by Alex Dorsine, who's in the right place at the right time. That'll bring up Lewis Rossi, the third baseman. Ben hit that one on the screws, and it was, looks like it was heading for the turf, but Dorsine was able to get to it, make up for his strikeout in the first inning. We'll take you through the zone five standings in just a moment as well as we are getting very close to playoff time here in the last week of the regular season. Man, does it just fly by or what? That's a strike. I wonder if Albert uh, got some pitching at BC High this year. He would have been a stable mate of Mike Vasso, who was in the top 20 heading into the Major League Draft on June 4th, but begged out. One and one on Rossi now. Let's take a look at the zone five standings. It's Lowell up top, 12 and one, and they pretty much uh, clinch with another win. Ashland's 11 and four in second place, and that is certainly something to uh, pay attention to. The first two, they will get a buy round in the first round, which is a single elimination round. In the second round, it is two loss elimination, so getting that buy and being in the top two spots is certainly important. As Albert is set to deliver the next pitch to Lewis Rossi. That one is low. Medford is in third at 10 and six. Natick tied with uh, Medford at 10 and five. They've actually played one less game. Hudson is seven and nine. Waltham six and nine. Bill Rick of five and seven. North Chelmsford four and 10. Sudbury three and 10. Newton two and nine. Wind up in the pitch. Swing and a miss, out number two. That'll bring up Jackson Horn on the shortstop. We'll probably cover the Natick or Hudson teams. Is that true, Tom? If they end up in the playoffs? Could be, we'll certainly keep you up to date on where we will be. Look over on the HCAM website at hcam.tv as well as our social media pages. You can follow me on Twitter as well as there is a strike to Horn at the real Tom Nappy. Is there a fake one out there? There is. Oh. There's, there's many fake ones. There's a lot of people trying to uh, make pretend they're me, Larry. Uh, it's getting out of control. I don't blame them, to be honest with you. Well, pitch low and inside. So when you talk about the zone five standings, pretty much you know the four that's gonna be in the postseason, really, unless there's some shocking upsets. But it's gonna be Lowell, Ashland, Medford, and Natick. That's the way it's looking right now. There is a strike on Horning. Hudson's no joke. They had that kid Arsenio. They beat uh, Ashland 77 last week, two to one. Well, the big threat for uh, the top two is Natick, who's only a game out, but you do have the tiebreaker. So that pretty much puts him two games out as Horning draws the walk. I don't think they'll be doing much running on this catcher. He looks like he's got a strong arm. Tom Cavanaugh, left fielder will step in. Little bit of a lead at first for Horning. There's a strike. Interesting delivery by Albert. Sort of holds the ball before he fires it. And he comes right over the top with it. Swing and a miss. Oh and two. He got some really good coaching over at Boston College High. They spare no expense. Swing and a miss. Out number three. Two strikeouts in the inning for Tim Albert. We'll head to the top of the second. We are scoreless here at Ashland Middle School. You are tuned in 
to Ashland Legion Baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the second inning, due up for Medford post 45, 5, 6, and 7. Tim Falkenberg, Scott Andrew, and Brendan Kelly. To face Owen Ward. He gave up a double to start off last inning, but three straight outs after that. And this game is scoreless between two very good Zone 5 competitors. Medford post 45 and Ashland Legion post 77. As Tim Falkenberg, the third baseman, steps in. Owen Ward's had a good season on the mound. He's pitched 17 and two-thirds of an inning. Two wins, no losses. Four appearances, three games started. A 198 ERA. As this is hit in the air over to center field, but playing deep and making the catch is Brad Seymour. One away, and that'll bring up Scott Andrew, the right fielder. Perfectly positioned. Brad Seymour was. Didn't have to move, but two, two steps. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Infield playing normal depth. And gets a piece of this one up the third baseline, but foul, 0-2. Fumbled by the coach. A pitch a little bit high, 1-2. and two. Dumpire seems to have a, a penchant for the high strike. As long as he's consistent. Fouled away. So I was mentioning earlier, I went down uh, to Falmouth to watch a Cape Cod baseball league game. Had never been, and boy was I surprised. Kids from everywhere. Mississippi, Arkansas, Nebraska. Ball. Stanford University. You name it, Florida. But I did happen to notice one thing about the home plate umpire. You see how far this one is from Sean Jewett? Yep. Gets a piece of this one, and that could be trouble. Hornung is going to run to his left and make the catch. Good coverage there by Jackson Hornung. The home plate umpire was literally breathing down the catcher's neck. You could hardly see any daylight between them. So he got, he got a really, really good view of what was going on. Brennan Kelly, the catcher, steps in. And he l launches this one over to right field, but the underhand catch, no, it hit the ground first before it went into Ben Thomas's glove. A two-out single for Kelly. Nice attempt, though, by Ben Thomas. He almost had that one. Good deke, though, for Ben. He just came running in like uh, he got the out, but the umpire, in base umpire, waved him safe. David Welsh, a shortstop, steps in. Slight lead over at first base. That one inside, 1-0. and oh. I'm putting some good swings on Owen Ward. Medford post 45. Well, Medford desperate for a win here. They're trying to get into that top two seeds, and they know they really have to win this game if they want any chance of that. If they lose, there'll be two full games behind Ashland. Pitch slightly high, two and one. Nice try, Sean. You try to bring that one down into the zone, but some umpire looks like an experienced fella. He wasn't buying. Checking at first, and now he'll deliver. And this is going to take a hop on the infield dirt, flip to second, no problem. As that will end the inning on the six to four force out, we'll head to the bottom of the second. We're scoreless here at Ashland Middle School. Bottom of the second inning, due up for post 77, 5, 6, and 7. Luke Gostafson, Zach Pesson, and Sean Jewett to face Tim Albert, a 6 foot, 170 pound lefty out of Boston College High School. Graduated this past spring. 
As Luke Gustafson, the DH today, set to step in. He pitched a tremendous game against Lowell the other day and a three to one victory for post 77, handing Lowell their first loss of the season. Tim Albert set to deal. A little bit high, 1-0. Oh. That one inside. Well, Albert is not heading to Virginia like his stable mate Mike Vassell. Of course, he wasn't in the MLB draft either, so... Probably play somewhere. There's a called strike two and one. Coming into the week, Luke Gustafson was hitting a 182, only 2411 at the plate. Of course, the main concentration with Luke has been his tremendous pitching. A pitch upstairs, three and one. Catch our last broadcast, you got to see him throw curveball after curveball after curveball for strikes. Albert deals, swing and a miss, full count. Luke's gonna be pitching, maybe not right away his freshman year, Tufts University, he'll be a jumbo. Wind up and the pitch, swing and a miss. Out number one. He won't be a DH for Tufts, I'll tell you that. He has good stuff, though. Zach Pesson, the first baseman to step in. He's been hitting the ball well. Certainly has. He was four for 12 last week during the five home games. Three RBIs, two runs scored. Triple and a double, I think he had for extra base hits. Maybe that was his brother, John. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit here. Ah, uh, thank you. Nice breeze, very relieving on this hot, humid day. Breaking pitch, low, 1 and 1. Fans starting to trickle in. Outfield playing Pesson straight away. This is up the middle, pass the reach of the pitcher, bobbled by the shortstop, and Pesson's gonna be safe at first. So there's the first exhibition of the haunted infield. It always has to rear its ugly head out. Yeah, they didn't take infield outfield, so they don't know where the gopher holes are. It's very true. And Sean Drew at the catcher steps in. Run around first, one out, up high. Tom was telling me before the game he's going to major in French and business when he gets out to college. Not this year, but next year. I said, wee oui, wee. Oui. Pitch upstairs. Two and oh. Brad Seymour on deck. See Albert's move over there. There's a strike. Two and one. I don't think he's going to show it until he thinks he needs it. Nice pitch there. Two and two. with a slight lead off of first. Albert looks over and now deals. As this is up the left side, that's gonna get down for a fair ball. And it'll be two on with one out. Sean really cleaned that one out. No chance for the left fielder to get it. Certainly did. That'll bring up Brad Seymour, the center fielder. Don't be surprised if he tries to lay down a bunt to move the runners up. He's got really good speed, so he can bump for a hit. 
Runs may be tough to come by with this guy on the mound. Swing and a miss. Very late swing. Third baseman playing pretty deep, so he's not worried about a bunt. The 0-1 fouled away. You couldn't get me to run around a soccer field on a night like tonight. That wouldn't last two minutes. <laughs> I don't blame you. That one low, one and two. Medford, one of the rare teams with the names on the back of the jerseys as well. Oh, no kidding. You're right. Yeah, they got the hookup over there. Pitch up high. Two and two. They get kids from Belmont Hill, Buckingham Brown and Nichols, Boston College High, Madignon, Austin Prep. So they went out recruiting. Swing and a miss. That's all. Out number two, two on, two outs. Fourth strikeout of the game for Tim Albert, and now Cole Glasper and the second baseman will step in. Medford Little Leaguers won the District 12 championship this past weekend. Now they'll go to the sectionals. There's strike one. I was going to give you a little bit of trivia. It's not related to this game. Albert looks at second and deals. 0 and 2. Foul tip. Oh, what's your trivia question today? No, Larry? I was just, it was a trivia statement that the Medfield Williamsport team had won the uh, District 12 championship, and then oh. they're going to the sectionals. That's my little. I like it. Research, trivial, sniglet. One and two. Medfield right fielder is given Glasper in the line. And this is well, fouled just over us. Count you okay? One and two. You are? I'm good. All right. at second and deals and this is fouled right towards us I'd go get the ball but I'm hooked up with a headset and I'd just rip it out and be a disaster I'd just stay here and yak Cover Cold glass one and two yep the two strikes on them there's strike three and that'll do it for the bottom of the second we are scoreless as we head to the top of the third on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the third, 9 1 and 2 due up for Medford Post 45. Tim Albert, the pitcher, will start things off, followed by Harry Welch, the left fielder, and Alex Dorsin, the center fielder. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for Ashland Legion Baseball. Connor Donovan on camera. Ashland Legion Baseball airing on HCAM. And Hopkinton, WACA TV in Ashland, now HCAT in Holliston. As Ward is set to deliver. That one outside, 1 0. Our broadcasting radius keeps spreading and spreading. That's right. Here's the 1 0. There's a strike, 1 and 1. Well, this game has the makings of a pitcher's duel between Tim Albert and Owen Ward. Last time out, Ward really showed his poise. That one's low, two and one. He's got another year, high school ball. Delivers, fouled away. Two and two to the lefty. Ben Thomas not guarding the line for this lefty down the right field. That's a Heads up, away. Tom. Count 
Now remains two and two. Oh my goodness. I thought he was heading back to the dugout with his bat in his hand. I thought so too. Full count. And this is up the middle, gloved by Horning. Throw to first, no problem. Six to three on the out. That'll bring up Harry Welsh, the left fielder. He doubled to start off the first. Jackson Horning knows this infield as well as anybody. Said two balls hit his way today. Made it look easy. Another lefty they bring up. Pitch low. Sean ought to quiet down behind the plate and stop jerking everything into the strike zone. Swing and a miss. One and one. The umpires appreciate it if you keep quiet hands. Fouled away, one and two. Got right, into, right into his kitchen on that pitch, Tom. Certainly did. There's strike three, two away. Take a seat. Second strikeout of the day for Owen Ward, and that'll bring up Alex Dorsin, the center fielder. Very comfortable seating over in the visitors' dugout. The sun right in their eyes, no problem. That's one of the advantages, the shade for the Ashland post-77 team. Certainly is, especially today. Yeah. Dorsin struck out his last time up. Ooh, that hit him. Not this time up. One on, two outs. Sean Maloney, the second baseman, to step in. Dorsey must be a speed guy if he's playing center field. Ward working from the stretch. A pitch outside, runner taking off from first, a throw up. Not in time, says the infield umpire. 1-0. Oh. He's a speed guy. Yeah, he <laughs> certainly is. Thought Hornung was trying to tag him between his legs. But he's safe nonetheless. And this ball is hit in the air over to right field, and it is caught. Just in front of the fence by Ben Thomas for the third out of the inning. We will head to the bottom of the third. You're tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network, consisting of H. Cat and Holliston, WACA TV in Ashland, and H. Cam in Hopkinton. Bottom of the third inning, post 77 coming back up to the plate. It'll be the top of the order. You're in the scoreless game against Medford post 45. Four teams from zone five will make the postseason. Two of those teams will get the buy round in the first round. Post 77 right now in second place, trying to hold that position. And a win over Medford here today would be a big help. A pitch inside, one and oh. I've heard you use the term before, buy. What does that mean? That means you don't have to play in that round. Oh, okay. Line up and the pitch. Down low, 2-0. Oh. Oh, that was a 59-foot, 11-inch fastball right there. Right off the tip of the plate. The front half of the plate, pardon me. Albert set to deal. And this is up the right side, past the first baseman, into right field it goes. A leadoff single for Ben Thomas. And that'll bring up Lewis Rossi. Ben Thomas, he's been whacking the ball. Last week, he played in four games, went six for 11. Three runs batted in, four runs himself, and two doubles, as well as three stolen bases. 
thought he had a triple sprinkled in, but I may be wrong. He got dirty on that play. Infield a little bit in on the right side. Runner taking off from first, swing pulled back, and the throw up, not in time. Stolen base for Ben Thomas, he just makes it look easy. Get the OxyClean out, Mr. Thomas. <laughs> Loves that head first slide. Certainly does. 1-0 pitch. Will Lewis drop a bun here? Down low. Runs look like they're going to be hard to come by today. And Lewis always has the green light. This is a part of the order you want up with no outs. Jackson Hornham waiting on deck. That one outside, 3 and 0 now. Albert has been uh, in very pressured situations being an Elite Eight team in the state. Inside, a four pitch walk to Lewis Rossi. Two on, no outs. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, to step in. He went four for 11 during last week's homestand. Three RBIs, three runs. Almost had a homer, missed it by five feet. He's not bunting for sure. Fouls that one into the backstop, 0 and 1. Fouls that one away, 0 and 2. Now he's set up for an off speed pitch. Albert's got a really good curveball. Tom Cavanaugh do up next. Ben Thomas, a uh, threat to steal. He's got a very good lead back there at second. That's fouled away. The battle continues on. Coach Johnson very aggressive on the bases. Second baseman covering the bag. That one's low. Did it hit him? Nope. Well. I think he might have been arguing that it hit his foot. Well, why didn't Ben Thomas go then? He One and two. It hit his bat? Not sure. Hmm. Holds his swing, two and two. That took a lot of discipline to hold up on that pitch. Did not go. Full count. Good eye by Horning. Appeal by the catcher. First base, uh, the base umpire said no. That's the final answer. Gets a piece of this one, that's fouled away. Can the catcher make a play on it? Yes. Nicely done by Brendan Kelly, one away, two on. Kelly didn't give up on that one. Tom Cavanaugh steps in, he struck out and is only at bat in this game, back in the first inning. It's gonna be a tough play if Ben Thomas wants to take it off for third, that third baseman is gonna have to Run in on the fly and catch it. Catcher's going to have to throw it right to the bag. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1. Albert had Kavanaugh spinning around like a top on that pitch. Two out, uh, one out, two on. Swing and a miss. Checking that third. Ben Thomas is taking off. They got him. I don't know about that call. Got one out, two on, and. Runs are going to be tough to come by. I don't know about stealing third in that situation. Well, they tried. That's all you can ask. Rossi did advance to second. That pitch up high. Perfect throw from the catcher. Tom Cavanaugh had a good plate. Had a good, um, had some good luck at the plate last week, but not here. He went seven for 11 last week, and he, Strikes out here, however, 
He's 0 for 2 on the day. We will cruise along to the top of the fourth. We are scoreless here at Ashland Middle School. Top of the fourth inning. Four, five, and six coming up for Medford. A scoreless game here in Ashland Middle School. Good pitcher's duel going on between Owen Ward and Tim Albert. David Price, the first baseman, will start things off, followed by Tim Falkenberg, the third baseman, Scott Andrew, the right fielder for Medford. Ward set to deliver. That one he called strike. Mm, well, I'm not sure about that. I'll take it. They giveth and they taketh away. And this is up the middle. Takes a couple hops. Horning has it. Throw to first. Not a problem. He makes it look simple. Six to three on the out. That was a tough hop. Certainly was. Tim Falkenberg, the third baseman, will step in. Almost hit him right in the kisser, too. And Coach Johnson between innings having a little word with the home plate umpire about when uh, Jackson Horning got hit in the foot, or at least we thought he did, but the home plate umpire said no. 0-1 count on Tim Falkenberg. Down low, one and one. Do you want to put Scoop Zacklad on the uh, <laughs> on the job to find out what happened with the umpire? That's not that important. As this is hit in the air and dropped, throw to first, got him. What a play by Jewett! Did make the catch, but caught it barehanded on the hop. Threw it up to first. And a rare two to three ground out for the second out. Well, you bring up or two to, yeah, I guess uh, scored a ground out. Scott Andrew will step in, the right fielder. Well, you can uh, blame that one on the hitter. He wasn't hustling all the way. The ball hit that high. He should have been on second base. I'm sure he's kicking himself now. A pitch down low, one and oh. Yeah, it looks like Jewett kind of just lost it up there. and. Ended up bouncing right in front of him, caught it on the hop, threw it right to first. Always a lot of backspin, but he had his back turned to home plate, so he did the right thing mechanically. Swing and a miss, one and one. Scott Andrew lined out his last time up. Down low, two and one. Ooh, that breeze, that's a welcome, welcome feeling. And this is up the left side, and it is going to be, it was gloved by uh, Hornung, but he was not able to get the throw off. A two-out single for Scott Andrew. Wouldn't have had him anyway. It'll bring up Brendan Kelly to catch, sure. Yeah, it was certainly a good attempt. That was just an awkward ball to play. In the hole, in the hole. Rossi made an attempt, but he's not long enough to get at it. See how aggressive the Mepha coach is. He had Dorsin run the last time. That pitch slightly high. Ward from the stretch. Deals. 2 and 0. Ward hasn't thrown that many breaking pitches so far. Fouled away. 2 and 1. Got some uh, players late arriving. Almost got caught on the mass pike. I'm sure uh, post 77, home of Ashland Legion, of course, um, Ashland Middle School is the commute that. A lot of these teams in zone five dread. Trying to make that 5.45 start time. As this one's hit in the air, does Jewett have it? Yes, he does. And that is going to be the third out of the top of the fourth to the bottom of the inning we go. 
We're scoreless at Ashland Middle School. Bottom of the fourth inning, due up for post 77. It's five, six, and seven. Luke Gustafson, Zach Pesson, and Sean Jewett. Face Tim Albert. Ronan Bates has arrived. He may substitute for Cole Glassburn against his lefty. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Gustafson struck out in his only at bat of the game in the second inning. Up high, 1 and 1. Gustafson, a stocky build. Not your prototypical pitcher's build. 2 and 1. Usually pitchers got some length to them. Not Lucas. He can get it up there. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Zach Payson waiting for his chance. Swing and a miss. Out number one. We'll bring up Zach Pesson, the first baseman. Pretty good week last week for Zach. Went four for 12 overall. Takes a strike there. Breaking pitch, one and one. Yeah, we're not happy with that call. Down low, two and one. Both pitchers haven't expended a lot of energy today. Good thing, because of the heat. Breeze we're getting is certainly helping. As this is sliced foul and out of play. That would have been a ball. Two and two on Zach Pesson. Primarily an Ashland crowd tonight, not too many. Gets a piece of this one hit in the air over to center field, ranging in and making the catch is Alex Dorsin two away. That's made people want to take the trip from Memphis to see a Legion game towards the end of the year when almost everything is decided. I wouldn't do it if I had a kid playing. It's good to know. Sean Jewett, the <laughs> catcher, steps in. Big hole on the right side for Sean. Oh, and one. That hit the catcher or the ump? I thought I heard the yell, oh. Two more games left for post 77 after tonight. They'll be at North Chelmsford on Wednesday the 18th, and they'll have their season finale at home against Sudbury. Where they started against Sudbury, 14 to one game. And this is past the reach of the pitcher, slow roller, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, they got him. Four to three on the out, one, two, three, they go to the top of the fifth, we go. We're scoreless at Ashland Middle School. Top of the fifth inning, eight, nine, and one, due up for Medford post 45. David Welsh, Tim Albert, and Harry Welsh. The Welsh brothers. Face Owen Ward, who is pitching a gem so far. He's given up no runs, three hits. And he has struck out two. David Welsh, the shortstop, stepping in now. He grounded out his last time up. Make it a mess around home plate, bringing up a lot of dust. David graduated Medford High School this past spring.
looks at a low pitch there, 1-0. Scoop Zaklad's going to report that that ball is going to drop in the right field. Ben Thomas picks it up, gets it in. Base hit, nobody out. Lead off single for David Welsh. And now Tim Albert, the pitcher, will step in. Well, the scoop was Jackson Horning kicked that ball, and therefore he wasn't awarded first base. Ah. Kick ball. We'll have to watch the replay. Interesting to see if Medford makes some hay in the bottom part of their order. Lead at first, the bunt, and that is a slow roller up the middle. Jewett is going to drop it, and it just slips right out of his hand. Everybody's safe. He's calling it foul. Oh, it was a late foul call. Look fair to me. All right. Infield umpire had, a, had his hands raised. That'll send Tim Albert back to the plate. Post 77 will take it, that's for sure. Could have been a little ugly there. And Coach Johnson just getting an explanation maybe. Well, a foul is a foul is a foul. Ward from the stretch. Runner on first, no outs. Swing and a miss. One and two. Albert was very, very late on that swing. Both... Uh, Dugouts are very reserved tonight. Not a lot of chatter. Gets a piece of this one over to center field towards the fence and caught by Brad Seymour. Welsh stays at first. One on, one out. And now Harry Welsh, the left fielder, will step in. Will Medford take a chance and Swipe a bag. They were successful earlier. Third baseman Lewis Rossi playing in. That pitch up high, 1-0. and oh. Lewis Rossi right at the cut, third base. This is hit high in the air over to center field and Seymour makes the catch. Two away. He's been busy out there today. That's three or four balls he's got to. Certainly has. I'll bring up Alex Dorsey. Struck out, I think, in the first inning. Dorsey struck out, was hit by a pitch. And swiped a bag. Swing and a miss, 0-1. Oh Foul tip. Ward working from the stretch with a runner on first, two outs. Maybe they want the runner to go and have him lead off. There he goes. Runner taking off, throw up. Jouet this time, guns him down. And that is going to be the third out of the top of the fifth. To the bottom of the inning we go. Medford and Ashland are scoreless on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fifth inning coming up for post 77, 8, 9, and 1. Brad Seymour, Cole Glassburn, and Ben Thomas do up to face Tim Albert, who has pitched four shutout innings against post 77 so far. Ashland went down one, two, three last inning. Look for Ronan Bates to pinch hit for Cole Glassburn if Brad Seymour gets on. Might go with the lefty-righty matchup. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. That's the 72nd pitch of the game. And 
this is chopped follow and two. Line up and the pitch. Upstairs, one and two. Brad Seymour had a great day against Waltham last Thursday. Went two for two with a pair of walks. Takes that one inside, two and two. Well, Albert's averaging 15, just about 15 pitches per inning which is where most pitching coaches would like to see. Something under 15, but it's pretty close. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs, full count. Decisive pitch. And this is hit high in the air over to left center. And ranging over to make the catch is the left fielder Harry Welsh went away. That'll bring up Cole Glasper in the second baseman. Cole's gonna be a senior at Hopkins in high school next year. Hopefully he'll get the starting job at shortstop. Takes that one low. If not shot, second. Get some innings in on the mound. If he keeps improving like he has during the Ashland Legion season, I'm sure he will. Swing and a miss there, one and one. Last few games, he hasn't had much luck at the plate. Breaking pitch in there for a strike, one and two. That totally fooled Cole. Well, steals. This is hit foul just above us. Count remains one and two. Umpire calling for more balls. One two pitch. Gets a piece of this one over to right field to the fence. And that is going to drop just in front of the fence and over. And that is going to be a ground rule double for Cole Glassburn. He bows to his teammates. They bow back. He gave that a right. That one was close. I thought it might get out of here. It drops just in front and then goes over. 1-0 double for Cole Glassburn. And now Ben Thomas steps in. Ben Thomas one for two at the plate so far today. Outside, one and oh. You're Ashley, and this is the guy you want to have up. Coach Obed imploring his players to get up and start cheering for Ben Thomas. Fouled away, one and one. Runner on second, one out. Just low, two and one. Albert may be tiring a little bit. Those pitch count is reasonable. There's a strike, two and two. Now 
Albert looks at second and deals. Outside, full count. Swing and a miss. And he's going to try to go down to first, but the throw's in time. And now advancing to third is Glassburn. Two away. Well, the go-ahead run is 90 feet away. Lewis Rossi. Would he? Do you think? Would he? Lewis Rossi has struck out and walked so far. Can he drive in Cole Glassburn, who's at third with two outs? Would he drag a bunt? I doubt it. First uh, baseman is playing in situation. no man's land. Heads That's up, foul. Tom. 0-1. Oh Oof. It's the closest it's come today. But really needs to bear down here with Rossi. He's very much of a pest. He's still my favorite player, though. That's fouled away, 0-2. Oh Got him set up for a breaking pitch. Glassburn walking halfway down the third base line. Albert's not pitching from the stretch. And he gets a piece of this one. That'll drop into center field. And the lead run comes around to score. It's a 1-0 post-77 lead as Lewis Rossi drives in Cole Glassburn. An RBI single, and that'll bring up Jackson Horn on the shortstop. With one on and two outs, a run in for post 77. That's why he's my favorite player. Ooh. Shin music, 1-0. One, oh. one for the head on that one. Well, that puts Medford down to their final six outs. The right fielder is playing so deep he should be up the street. And this is fouled towards us, it comes. And is it catchable? Yes, third baseman will make the catch. That'll be the third out of the bottom of the fifth, but not before. Post 77 plates are on courtesy of Lewis Rossi. An RBI single to drive in Cole Glassburn. It's 1-0 as we head to the top of the six on HCAM and WACA-TV. Top of the sixth inning, two, three, and four do up for Medford. Alex Dorsine, Sean Maloney, and David Price. Dorsine was left at the plate on that uh, caught stealing last inning. That's right. They sent David Welsh to try to steal second. They tested Sean Jewett, and Sean Jewett passed the test with flying colors to record the third out of last inning. Johnny Bench Jewett. Owen Ward is going to throw his 56th pitch. 56 through 5. Fouled away. Bedford now down to their final six outs. Swing and a foul tip. Owen 2. Jewett had a lot of action last week. He caught seven games in eight days. He didn't want to break. Swing and a miss, out number one. John Maloney, the second baseman, will step in. Ward put a little extra, extra, extra something on that last pitch. There's a called strike, 0 and 1. Batter didn't like it. No matter, it's a strike anyway. Inside, 1 and 1. There's the 1 1. Strike 2. 
The Medford bench is uh, giving the home plate umpire the business. And this is up the right side, and it is foul. Maloney got the bad news. He's got to go back. Howell remains one and two. Ward deals. Down low, two and two. There's a breaking pitch. Zach Pesson's the reincarnation of George Scott, for those at home who remember him. The boomer. Fouled away. Cow remains two and two. You're too young for that, Tom, but I'm sure some of the viewers at home remember him. Wind up and the pitch. Just outside, full count. Good battle here between Sean Maloney and Owen Ward. And this is up the right side foul. I'm surprised uh, 77 doesn't have any warm up activity in the bullpen just in case. Skinny little one run lead. After this at bat, they might think about that. Sure, they have Dominic Cavanaugh. Pull off the bench between the inning. And this is driven over to right center, and Seymour makes the catch. Down to the last four outs. David Price, the first baseman, to step in. Well, you got some good distance on that one, but Seymour playing deep as usual, able to make his way over and record the out. Just got under it. That one low, 1-0. One oh. Price is 0 for 2 today so far. That one's fouled away, one and one. Game is only an hour and 22 minutes old. Started right on time. Classic pitcher's duel we got going on here. Outside, two and one. Gets a piece of this one. That could be trouble over to center field and it'll drop just in front of Seymour. Two out single for Price. Fifth hit of the game for Medford and that'll bring up Ted Falkenberg, the third baseman. Medford won't take any chances on the bases. Price doesn't look like the type that would steal. A big body type. Upstairs. Doesn't mean Owen Ward can't check over there. 2 0. Oh. Owen Ward doing some manicuring on the mound. Fouled away, two and one. Looks at first and is set to deal. And this is driven over to right field. That'll get down for a base hit. It's going to be two on with two outs. Scott Andrew, the right fielder, to step in.
Coach Obed positioning his outfielders. He wants Seymour to move in, Kavanaugh to move in a little bit. Andrew fouls that one away. He's one for two so far today. No pressure on Andrew right here. The two out, rudder in scoring position. Brendan Kelly waiting on deck. Your forces in the infield. Down low, checking at first, and the runner's back just safe. And now an advance to third by Price. Well, that was planned. Well, you know how I feel about back picks. Rarely do they work, and most times bad things happen. Still, we got forces here. There's the 1-1. One, one. And this is hit in the air, a little bloop shot, and that's going to drop in a right field. This game's tied at one. An RBI single for Scott Andrew. David Price comes around to score. Ted Falkenberg up to second. That was a costly play, that back pick. Brennan Kelly, the catcher, to step in. A little bit of life on the Medford bench now. And this is hit in the air. Should be caught. Hornan comes in, makes the catch, no problem. That's the third out of the top of the six, but Medford has tied things up. It's 1-1 heading to the bottom of the inning on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the sixth inning, a 1-1 game here at Ashland Middle School. Medford and Ashland tied up, one apiece. Four, five, and six, due up, four post 77. Dom Cavanaugh steps in. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Ashland Legion Baseball. Connor Donovan on camera today. Had a whole lot of Ashland Legion Baseball lately. Six home games in the past nine days. That pitch down low, one and oh. The past eight days, rather. 2-0. Albert's heading towards that 90 pitch mark. They don't have any warm up activity. Neither does post 77. 2-0 pitch. Low, 3-0. Coach Obid wants some noise out of that dugout. There's a strike, three and one. Albert deals. This is hit high in the air, foul out of play. Oh, that young woman, young woman over there with the dog. Looks like she was camping under it, ran away from it. <laughs> Gotta keep your eyes open out here. Her husband going over there to protect. Wind up and the pitch. And this is lined into right center. That's gonna get down for a base hit. Tom Cavanaugh goes around first. Here he goes to second. The throw in is cut off. It's a leadoff double for Dom Cavanaugh. That fires everybody up, including Tom Nappy. Certainly does, as Luke Gustafson will step in. He hasn't had the best of times tonight. Ronan Bates is in the on-deck circle, it looks like. He might come in for Zach Pesson. Is there a re-entry rule in Legion? Nope, once they pull you, you're done. One no count on Gustafson. Coach Johnson may pull Bates back and have Bates hit for Glassburn, even though 2-0. Glassburn hit a rocket his last time up. Well, you wonder what the leash is with Tim Albert. He's pitched a great game, but starting to struggle a little bit. Swing and a miss, 2-1. and one. Runner on second, no outs, four post 77. 
It's a 1-1 tie between Ashland and Medford here in the bottom of the sixth. Albert looks at second and deals. Upstairs, three and one. Albert snaps the ball back from the catcher. I must thought Coach Johnson would try and sacrifice here and move Cavanaugh to third. There's a strike, full count. Post 77 run would put Medford down to their final three outs. There is strike three. Thought it was a walk, but the umpire says nope. One on, one out. Ronan Bates steps in. I think that's a trifecta for uh, Gustafson tonight. Ronan Bates. Are they going to call time, Coach Jack, uh, Johnson, and pull uh, Bates back? I think the umpire just wants an explanation. Ronan Bates stepping in for Zach Passon. Well, I think he's already announced the change, unless he's going to change the change. Peston's been hitting the ball really, really well. Well, Bates is still in there, so I imagine he's staying in. Not quite sure what this whole ordeal is about. Maybe because Bates wasn't on the starting roster, starting lineup. I think you have to have everybody listed regardless of if they are a substitute. Well, Bates is listed there. I don't know what this is about. Hmm. Interesting, to say the least. Well, we have a discussion over there, the Medford bench. Coach Johnson with the umpires, along with the Medford coach, talking about something. I believe it's, it has to do with this, uh, with Rowan Bates coming into the game for Zach Pesson. So we'll uh, continue to monitor the situation and see what's going on here. It's a very uh, interesting situation, to say the least. You don't typically see stoppages that take this long. We don't want to have a miscue in terms of a decision, like a batting, order out, batting out of order situation. And I'm assuming that guy over there with the sunglasses has to do with Medford. A lot of people in Medford wear sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, looks like Bates is going to stay in the game, and we'll continue on here. And now we're going to have a discussion. Oh, there may be a pitch count with, here. Uh, the catcher. Maybe one over the yeah, 105. Yeah, that, that might be it. Could be a pitch count thing, so maybe Coach Johnson called him out on it. And the coach will indeed take the ball. We'll have a substitute pitcher for Medford. Yay! One on, one out, bottom of the six. We'll take a timeout on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Continuing on with the bottom of the sixth inning, Ronan Bates stepping in a new pitcher on the mound for Medford Post 45. Moving over from third base to take over is Teddy Falkenberg. He's now on the mound. And then we got John Darkamanji over at third base now. That's where Falkenberg started the game. So the discussion with the umpires over at the Medford bench was about pitch count. There is pitch count regulations. And Coach Johnson realized that Tim Albert went over the pitch count and he needed to come out of the game. So that was the discussion and the reason that Medford was pretty quick to uh, put in a new pitcher after that discussion. Now the Medford coach talking with the umpires, not too happy, I'm sure. Tim Albert went five and a third. It was 105 pitch count, I believe. 
And now Coach Johnson's going to be way back over the umpire, so. I don't know who on their end was keeping count of the pitches, but Coach Johnson is very meticulous about his pitch counts. Well, he is because there's pitch count regulations, and you got to know where a guy's at because it, if he gets past a certain amount, the team could be penalized. I mean, maybe the Medford couch wasn't keeping count. He's got to take Coach Johnson's word for it because he's got that piece of software. What do they call it? Game changer? Game changer, yep. And that could be a game changer. <laughs> Pulling out Albert. How'd you like that segue, all right? Loved it. Tim Albert had nine strikeouts in five and a third of an inning. Giving up five hits, one run, walk two. Good outing for Albert, but certainly had to throw a good amount of pitches to get out of some of the jams. And the discussion continues over near the Medford bench with the two coaches, Coach Johnson and Coach D'Angelo for Medford. And while that discussion continues, why don't we uh, take you through the standings for those of you that missed it earlier. Lowell, first place, 12 and one. Ashland, second place, 11 and four. Medford at 10 and six. Natick, 10 and five. Hudson, seven and nine. Waltham, six and nine. Bill Ricca, five and seven. North Chelmsford, four and 10. Sudbury, three and 10. Newton, two and nine, as we are ready to play on. Ronan Bates, I think we'll finally have his at bat now. That pitch up high, one and oh. I think they made a replacement at shortstop. They have number two out there. We'll get his name for you in a minute. Right up in the pitch, and this is up the third base side, and that is going to be a fair ball, and the lead runner going to be waved around. Here comes Kavanaugh. It's 2-1 to one post 77. An RBI single for Ronan Bates. The second pitch that Falkenberg threw. I'll bring up Sean Jewett, two one lead, four post 77. One out, one on. Falkenberg deals. And this is hit high in the air over to right field and caught by Andrew. And the runner's gonna tag, head to third, and the throw is gonna be launched over towards us. And now Bates is gonna score. On the overthrow, and it's a 3-1 game. Falkenberg talking to himself over there. Ball went out of play. I thought we were going to get run over for a minute, Larry. That would have been all right. Brad Seymour Take one for the team. In. Take one for the team. I think we helped him get that run there. <laughs> Medford's not too happy with Ashland's chirping. Well, it's a Falkenberg. frustrating situation. They Falkenberg weren't happy about uh muttering to himself over there. Well, they weren't happy about Coach Johnson calling him out on the pitch count, but hey, rules are rules, you know. The 0-1. There should have been a cutoff man there. They let an unnecessary base. Kavanaugh's going to warm up. Upstairs, 2-1. Bases are clear for post 77. Bates comes around to score on an overthrow on a tag up. And this is hit high in the air. Could be the third out. The shortstop back pedals and makes the catch. Hot Dog did a little bit with one hand. If he had dropped that, he'd be mortified. Post 77 plates two more runs. It's three to one heading to the top of the seventh. Medford down to their final three outs on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the seventh inning, as Medford will come up to the plate down to their final three outs. Running out of time here, post 77 able to plate two runs in a long extended bottom of the sixth that was just filled with some interesting happenings. And Falkenberg, the pitcher, didn't get over in time to back up third, and he was pretty verbal, and the shortstop wasn't there for the cutoff throw from right field, so that's... They have only themselves to blame. As this is right back up to Ward, and he will flip it over to first, no problem. One to three for out number one. And Owen Ward giving uh, the Medford bench the uh, standing O. That's got to tick off the Medford bench. He walked it all the way over, made the runner run all the way down that 90 feet. There certainly is some bitter feelings here between uh, 
coming from the Medford bench especially. Who's this, Lurch? Dark Armanji steps in. Oh, Dark Armanji, sorry. A strike. Take a strike there. Big strike zone for Dr. Manji. Certainly is. We're two outs from getting out of here, Tom. That's right. And this is up the right side past the dive of Zach Pesson, and that is going to be a single. And Zach Pesson does come back into the game. Ron Bates was just there for a pinch hit. I believe they get one pinch hit and the guy can come back into the game. If they pinched hit for him again, he'd have to come out. So it is one out, one on. And here is Harry Welsh, the left fielder. Turn on, Harry. And I think the umpire is going to give uh, both benches a warning here for the chirping. Well, hopefully... Uh, this game ends sooner than later. There was a thunderstorm we're watching. Really? Where is it? Right now it's in the Marlboro area. But it's a quick moving thunderstorm, but of course any lightning would have a significant delay on this game. And they'd have to revert back to the last inning and that'd be a tie score. Well, I mean, it could end now. It is an official game, but Gonna pinch run for Dermajanji. Hermanji. It's gonna be Tim Albert pinch running, so Albert re enters the game as a pinch runner. As Harry Welsh steps in. One on, one out. Albert's got pretty good speed. One and oh. The slightest bit of trouble, Dominic Cavanaugh will come in for Ward. Fouled away, one and one. Guarantee you Sean Jewett will not try and back pick this kid. Every dollar I have in my pocket, he will not do it. Swing and a miss, oh one and two. Oh my goodness, he popped up and looked there. like he was going to do it. <laughs> yeah, you never know with him. He's not afraid to throw Very aggressive, line. but... Well, there's no other runners on besides the runner at first, so. Well, could put a run in the scoring position. Swing and a miss, out number two. See you later, grab some pine. Medford down to their final out. Alex Dorsey in a step in. Well, there's a little chirping on the Ashland bench, so we'll see how the handshake goes after the game. I don't think it'll go very well. Maybe keep the cameras rolling for that one. I hate violence, I, I abhor it. Strike. It's breaking pitch. Eight hits in the game so far for Medford. Wind up and the pitch upstairs. Ashland had a much easier commute, commute to uh, Medford on Sunday. It says here the rain will begin around 737, five minutes from now. So hurry up, Owen. That one inside, two and one. Post 77 has scored three runs on six hits. Swing and a miss. Down to his last strike, I think. Yep, two and two. They gonna send the runner just for the heck of it? This kid struck out in the first inning. Got hit by a pitch. I don't know what he did his third time up. Runner taking off from first, Doesn't swing matter. and a miss, and that's gonna end the ball game. Ashland post 77 pulls off the three to one win over Medford post 45, an impressive win to say the least. And this all but just about guarantees that post 77 will have one of the top two spots in the playoff picture, which is certainly a big help. Ashley now 12 and four on the season. Medford falls to 10 and seven as Ashland post 77 takes down Medford three to one. Ashland scores three runs on six hits, commits no errors. Medford one run on eight hits, 
and one error. Owen Ward pitched a gem of a game. He is your player of the game as he went all seven innings just giving up that one run. A tremendous pitching performance by Owen Ward against a very good Medford team here today. The final score for the final time, Ashland post 77 defeats Medford by a final score of three to one. Ashland now 12 and four on the season. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Ashland on Legion Baseball and the Ashland Legion Baseball Network, consisting of HCAM in Hopkinton, WACA-TV in Ashland, and HCAT in Holliston. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. We'll talk to you again soon.